Hey, it's Azure Friday. We're talking with Corey from the Virtual Machines team. Uh, we were looking in the gallery. I noticed Visual Studio. I made a Visual Studio mm -hmm. uh, virtual machine. Right. And I can go in here and see that it's running. Yep. And I remoted into it, and it's it's starting up Visual Studio 2013. Yeah. It's got SharePoint on the thing. Yep. It's got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that's right. So, this, I mean, we love this image because it ends up being sort of the, um, the uh, sort of Swiss Army uh, of the images for dev tests, right? So mm -hmm. it allows you to do the Visual Studio. It has that built in. It also actually has SQL uh, all ready to go here, and it has SharePoint as well. So everything's on this box for you to go set this up and do mm -hmm. sort of a full dev test of whatever you may want to do. Is that reasonable that I might actually spend time, like, if I don't want to set up my own machine with 2013, I could actually use an Azure machine? Absolutely, yeah. We see, we see a lot of people who use that. Um, because the other thing is that your personal dev box may not have this type of power that you can get from these, right? And so you may end up spinning a dev box here that you want to do some pretty heavy load testing on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you want to go use those extra large or the A7, right? The 56 gig. No one has a 56 gig box to test on. Yeah, but that's the value true. of this is that now you stop it when you don't want to use it, right? So you do it for an hour. You then shut it down. You can bring it back up. Oh, and you right? don't pay for it. Exactly, then. exactly. So there's a lot of value. You turn it off every night, right? So if you even just do it during business hours, right, or on the weekends. Mm, yeah. What is a? There's different choices for the different kinds of VMs. Yep. What What is a good size? Like I don't want to spend too much money. It, you know, you know it's, I mean? hard, it's hard. Yeah, no, I hear you. It's hard to say. So the nice thing, of course, with MSDN, if you're running through an MSDN account, you're, it's very cheap, right? The prices are much reduced. Is it, right? is it like thirty percent less or something? Yeah, for like it dev? ends up being equivalent prices between Windows and Linux. So uh, you end up seeing a, a pretty, pretty significant drop. Mm -hmm. And then SQL is is free, uh, and BizTalk is free, and Visual Studio is free. So I don't pay so, for really anything up on top of my my number uh, of uh, cents per hour. Correct. Or whatever it is. Correct. That's right. That's right. So I picked medium because mm -hmm. it seemed. Reasonable. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. Know? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it again. It depends on the type of testing you're doing. If you're going to be doing some SQL, like SharePoint with SQL on all in one box, okay, you're going to need more memory. So would uh, I pick a large? Uh, you know, I, I, I would actually go even higher. If you're trying to run a real SharePoint deployment with SQL, you're going to need up into the 28 oh, or 56. Oh, where SQL and SharePoint are all in one box. On the so same the box. one in box, you end up needing a lot more memory. Now, if you're just doing a SQL workload and you don't really care maybe as much about the performance, you're just testing out some code. You can do medium. You can do large. Those would work, mm -hmm. um, uh, or even A5, right, and do kind of the two core by 14 if you're using SQL. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the workload. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I noticed also, though, when I went into the, uh, the gallery that there was a bunch of images that are not Windows. Yep. Because I was running Ubuntu earlier. I think yeah. I ended up running the long-term uh, uh, support version of Ubuntu. Yeah. But we've got Oracle. And then check this out down here. There's my image. I was able to actually go and prepare yeah. images. Great. Yeah. That and it's one, a Linux one. Is it again built built on Ubuntu? Yeah, I was right. on, on Ubuntu. So when I go to my images, it shows up here. Right. Right. So what this is is, you know, we, we obviously we build these images for a quick start, but for people who want to go pre-install some things or it allows faster scale out in the future, um, you can sort of pre-create these images and sort of capture them as we call it. So mm -hmm. um, there's two different ways on the Linux side. There's actually an agent inside, and we can kind of you know go through and show that with a with a, just a slash deprovision command. You can end up capturing it for reuse. Mm -hmm. On the Windows side, it uses SysPrep, which is actually the Windows-based technology for for doing that sort of imaging. Right. And what that gives you is it now allows you to redeploy these images. So if you just select that and go next here, um, you have the same options that you have mm -hmm. as if it were a gallery image. You can select your username, you can select the password, and so on. And all of that is done for you uh, as part of that provisioning process. If you were just booting a VM, you don't have any of these abilities to do this. And so that's kind of the big difference between image and disk. Right. And then with this Linux one, I could put in a password, which I'm doing, or I could have just put in my SSH Correct. certificate. Yep. I'm going to get rid of that, and then I. Uh, this is a part that took me a moment to understand. Uh, I could create a new cloud service or connect to an existing one. And the word cloud service was confusing to me. <laughs> I, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 a container. Yes. That that associates them together. Correct. So I already have yep. Hanselman Linux Farm. Yep. So then I would want him to be a member of the farm. This would be virtual machine number three. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And then he would get involved correct, in the farm correct. and be part and then, of the same availability And set. like we showed, you could then add them to the load balance set and be able to sort of load balance traffic to it as well. That's right. Right, right, right. And one of the things that I ended up writing up on my blog a while back was, was how to do that. Uh, I went and made Hanselman Linux farm. Uh, and if you search for that, you'll find how to set it up. And I found, with all due respect to the portal, that once I set it up in the portal, it was easier to do it from the command line. Okay. So I ended up doing 
Oh, these are the new no tools. Very cool. Azure VM Create. Yeah. The name of the farm. That's the uh, the, the uh, cloud service. Yeah. The name of the image. Yep. And then just name and password or the SSH Absolutely. cert. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so then what I ended up doing was kind of interesting. I ended up making a batch file. And I realized that I could use SSH, uh, but I learned how to do the endpoints yep. from the command line. Fantastic. But the result, let me just scroll down here for a second. There we go. Was basically a 10-line batch file. Right. And it, the interesting part for me was the notice the first command, which is create the farm. Yeah. That's VM1. Right. Then 2, 3, 4, 5 connect to the existing one and then they all become they all become a farm yeah, together a, a family yeah even. and yeah. if you look at the previous videos that we've done uh, we talked about probing you can actually pass all that in on the command line that's right that's great yeah exactly so and then that they're all is probing a, to that same, that is a that same size. five yeah. linux vms in a farm all together ready to go and but fully they load were, balanced they were uh, what was the word deprovisioned yes but previously before that that's previously. right previously yep and there's actually a, a linux agent user guide yeah what does that agent do? The sysprep and WA agent, they do something to the operating yeah, system. Yeah, so there's, there's um, the, the agent that we wrote here for and actually have open source for, for Linux, uh, it's a very simplistic thing. It really, all it does as part of the deprovision operation mm -hmm. is it, it actually goes in and cleans up certificates, right? And one of the big things it does, it cleans up certificates, it sort of gets it back to what we call sort of vanilla state, right? Um, the main reason for that is, what you know, state? a vanilla state, oh, sort, okay. of a, sort of a, a, a initial starting state. Yeah, it's a blank state. slate. Exactly, exactly. And so, um, for Linux, the key thing is, again, cleaning up that username password that you may have already set, cleaning up those certificates so the next person who uses it don't have the access to those. Uh, SysPrep does that all for you. Uh, and so that's kind of the big aspect of what that deprovision does. Mm -hmm. On boot, the things that we do with this agent uh, when we in, put this into the uh, Linux box is, you know, we set up the username and the account based on what you put through the portal. We set up the swap space to go to that temporary drive that we showed earlier. Um, and uh, we configure some of the other things like the SSH key and so on. You can see this whole list here. Right. And when I did this, I don't know much about Linux, but I ended up, I, I went and I used a standard uh, gallery image, Yeah. made it, yep. then SSH'd into it. Right. I did apt-get, and I set up PHP, and yep. I set up Apache, and then I said, all right, this I think is perfect. Yeah. I tested it, and I could get traffic to it. Yep. I went deprovision. Perfect. And then it showed up in my images. As this image, and now this is in. And, and the nice thing is, this is just a, a VHD in your account. So it ends up just being another VHD in your account, so you could now copy this around. If Let you me ask you to. this: Could I have done that work uh, on my on my Hyper-V system? You sure could. And yeah. then because it, maybe it would have been faster or more yeah, convenient. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And then, and then, you then upload, upload it. it exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So and that actually that page that you showed mm -hmm. uh, kind of walks you through how you could conceivably do this. Uh, uh, that. Uh, Oh, the Linux. Yeah, correct. Basically, how you could conceivably do this just to a running Linux box, right? Or, or get a Windows machine. Correct. correct. So if I have an existing uh, product that yeah. runs on multiple virtual machines, and I'm doing it already in Hyper-V, yeah. I could get those ready. Yep. Do I, I sysprep them first and then upload them? Yeah, that's right. And I think, you know, uh, one of the things that we've heard from a lot of customers is they have big libraries of already sysprepped images because they do something like this on-prem. Uh, and so now it just makes it really easy. Those are, if they're VHD formats, you can bring them up, import them as images, mm -hmm. and then we can provision them instead of you having to provision them. That is a good segue. We'll stop now. In the next one, we'll talk about big libraries of pre-prepared images. Big libraries. I love it. All right. It's Azure Friday. Thank mm -hmm. you.